Hector, hi, Jim Delapine here. I want to give you some visual feedback, video feedback on what you've created here. And I know you're excited about it. So let me point out some uh, ways to improve this. So if I look at the, uh, first of all, I had requested that there be no duplication of elements for the um, um, arms, legs, you know, uh, basically no mirroring. And you have that here. So I'd like you to fix that for the final submission. Do not simply mirror these ears of corn unless you have a different perspective. Okay. I was kind of clear in my directions with that. So you have to do that. All right. So the um, layer masks, let's take a look at those. Okay. So let's go to the orange. Notice that if I have auto select checked in the move tool, when I click on an element, it will go right to that layer. So it makes it a lot easier. Okay. So if I uh, disable the layer mask. I could see that. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, here, you have a whole. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that shows me that you've um, you've uh, you basically eliminated the background using the mask. Okay, instead of deleting pixels. All right. This shouldn't be like this. It really this should be on this layer, but that's okay. Not not a big deal. All right. So basically, what you want to do though is uh, have elements stick out of the orange so we'll take the orange copy and bring that down below all the elements here and then uh flipping food fred let me just hide that for now and remember you need to stay within uh, a six by eight area but you have a soft file that's the wrong size so it's supposed to be eight wide by ten high yours is five high five wide right by seven high okay so what you need to do is simply, um, you could go to, you don't want to increase the image size because that will um, distort it. So go to canvas size, okay? That will simply extend the background, okay? So width would be eight and, uh, and this would be 10, okay? So we're expanding out in all directions, right? So there you go. So now you need to stay within a six by eight area. So if I bring guides over by clicking and dragging the ruler, I come over to here, drag down from the top. I'm basically coming in one inch on all sides. All right. So go here. So that's that what, where your character needs to stay contained within. Okay. So let me zoom in a little, in a little bit first. So, you know, if you want to take these and basically have them look like they're sticking out of the orange that's fine um but what i suggest you do so you did one and then duplicated it which i guess is smart but and, and that's fine that's fine but let's let's take this one and uh and delete the copies for now all right now what i want you to do is a good job on one all right so i see this looks like a squared off end so if i uh, disable the layer mask, I could see why. Okay, so what you need to do is go to your paintbrush tool, make sure it's at 100% hardness, uh, make sure the size is appropriate, little shortcut, left bracket key will reduce the size of your brush. And now, very important, you have to have the layer mask active or selected in order for this to work. Okay, so with the layer mask active, I'm, you're going to ask, ask you to go sh click and then shift and slowly go around. Okay. Notice I'm painting, painting with back, black on the layer mask. And that's that's creating a masked out effect. Okay. So, so here. So there's one. Do one right and then you can duplicate it. But what I would do now is take this and go to, uh, let's see, image. Uh, let's see, edit, transform flip vertical so it's upside down okay so what we'll do is have these stick out of his hair out of his out of the orange or out of his head so i'm just going to move this and i'll bring it in the center here okay and then i'll i'll go to my actually i should duplicate these first all right so one quick way to do it is to hold down the control key and the alt key okay and notice that double arrowhead, that's the sign of duplicate. So now I'll drag that over here and then drag this over here, drag this here and drag and drag it over here. doesn't matter where. So then hit control T and we'll start to rotate these. Okay. So 
So actually, I'll, I'll rotate this one first. So notice I just click on this, and it instantly becomes active because this is checked. All right, hit Control T for free transform. Now what I can do is move the center point down here, and that allows me to rotate around that center point. Okay, so make note of that. All right, so I, I can rotate it a little bit, move it up a little bit. All right, hit Enter when I'm happy. Take this, move this up a little bit. And okay, so then select this one. I mean, I could, for sake of efficiency, duplicate these and then flip them horizontally, but you don't want it to look like that. You want it to, to look kind of like random and different, a little different, okay? To make it more, more natural. Okay, so. Uh, okay. Now what we'll do is select the layer mask for each one. All right, and that is this one here. Go to my paintbrush. And we're imagining that these are sticking into the orange, okay? So we're gonna have to do that. The problem with this is that the color is kind of close. I don't know if there's a problem or a benefit. So I'm gonna control click this, all right? And then while I'm in the paintbrush tool and whoops, notice I have to be on the layer mask, okay? Okay, so notice the mistake I made. I, I went like this and hey, that doesn't look right. If I look down at my my layer, I see that the image is, is active and not the layer mask. So I undo that, control Z, then go back and select the layer mask. And then, okay, all right, go to this one, layer mask. Okay, so you get the idea. All right, next what we'll do is we'll, we'll create shadows. All right, and we'll create shadows for these too. All right, so for the eyes. And notice for the, um, you should really get another ear of corn so that it comes from a different perspective and another banana. All right. Um, I would, uh, so that what you're going to do is actually this could work here, but the banana skin won't. Let's, so let's say you're sticking the banana. So what you need to do is imagine what it will look like sticking into the orange. So you have to just basically eliminate part of it. All right. So imagine that a banana could stick in there. Okay, um, and then we're going to create shadow. So let's say I, I create a shadow for this ear of corn. Okay, I'm going to create a new layer. So it'll come out on top of, of uh, actually, there should be a layer below. I'm going to drag this new layer down below this corn layer. And now what we'll do is create a shadow. So I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool. Uh, I'm going to click on the foreground color black and select a medium gray. Okay? There. Now, I'm going to adjust my brush size. So I hit my right bracket key and, whoops, and that increases the size. All right? I'm also going to go up here and select um, like a zero, uh, not a zero percent, but a hardness, like maybe, I don't know, 15 percent, 14 percent, and see what that looks like. So now I'm going to paint on the new layer. And it's going to paint below is imagining that this is creating a shadow. Okay. All right. So now it looks like junk. You know, it's just simply gray on the orange. But if we change the blending mode to multiply, you know, it's a lot. It looks different. Okay. It doesn't look too good yet. But what we could do is simply lower the opacity. Okay. Then we could also eat away from that. So what I'll do is I'll create a layer mask for that layer okay so this is a layer mask for the shadow layer okay go to my paintbrush tool and now i'm going to select a bigger brush and what i'm going to do is kind of eat away i want this to look like uh, a uh, a shadow all right so you kind of have to use your artistic skills here okay so i'm eating away slowly with the bigger brush and it's going to eat away some of that shadow okay so something like that, and you, you know, since it's on its own layer, you can adjust it, you can increase the scale, I'm sorry, the opacity, etc. So I'd like you to imagine that and do do the shadow for each one of these uh, almonds, I think they're almonds, and then get another ear corner and put it in here to set a different perspective and get a different banana or at a different perspective, okay? And then create the shadows. And also create a shadow for the eyes, all right? It'll make them pop out more, all right? I hope that helped. Take care, Hector. Oh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 one more thing. You have to scale your character up. Right now, it's very wide, so that's a problem. 
So one way around it is to take one of these and, and kind of like, you know, have him s stretching upward. All right. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to click and shift click all the layers above the background layer. So I clicked on that bottom layer here. Then I'm scrolling to the top and shift clicking this top visible layer. Okay. Then hitting control T and then scaling that up. So here's how I do it. So all of these are selected. So that means they'll, everything will scale up at one time. So I'm going to click in any corner of bounding box and start to drag outward. As I drag, I'm going to hold down the shift key and the alt key. The shift key will constrain it. And the alt key will scale it out from the center. So something like that. All right. I'm going to let go of my shift and alt key first, and then I'm going to hit enter to apply that transformation. Okay. So I suggest that you get longer elements to put in here instead of these bananas. Maybe the bananas would be better as arms and the corn for legs because they're longer. Okay, so it's up to you. Okay, take care. Bye.